Hey, geometry students, pretty simple lesson for you today as we talk about the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. It's a special kind of right triangle that has some pretty easy to follow properties, okay? Um, now, we would call this an isosceles right triangle. Why isosceles? Because an isosceles triangle, two sides are equal. Notice that in this right triangle, we have a side X and another side X. 45, 45, 90 triangle has two congruent sides two congruent angles, uh, and it's isosceles and right. Could there be another isosceles right triangle other than this one? Well, think about this for a second. Um, I'm stipulating it's a given that it has to have a right angle, okay? Can there be another right angle in an isosceles triangle? Well, think about that for a second. If a right angle is 90 degrees, and I tried to make a triangle that had two right angles, two 90-degree angles, that's already 180 degrees. I don't have any degrees left for my third angle. So it's not possible for the right triangle, for the right angle to be uh, one of the two congruent angles. It always has to be the third angle. And then we have to take the remaining 90 degrees after subtracting this 90 from the 180 of the triangle. The remaining 90 degrees has to be split evenly among the other two angles. And that's how I get 90 and 45, 45. Okay. Now let's just think about this triangle. Let's say that one of my sides here, one of the legs has a length of one. Well, that means the other le uh, leg also has to have a length of one because it's isosceles. What would the length of the hypotenuse be? Pythagorean theorem says the hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus b squared, or a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? C would be the square root of a squared plus b squared. In this case, it would be one plus one. Um, one plus one is two. The third side is the square root of two. Now, I want you to think of this as well. If I have more than one isosceles right triangle, my isosceles right triangles are always going to be similar to each other because they have the same angles inside. They have to have the same angles inside. So what if instead of one, this was two on the bottom and two on the side? Well, if it's a similar triangle, that means that this side is going to grow by the same factor. So instead of being just the square root of two, this would be two times the square root of two. If this side was three, this would have to be three times the square root of two. Four, four times the square root of two. So you see why this length is significant? Whatever this length here is x, this is always going to be just the square root of two times that length. Just wait until we get to some practice problems. You see how easy that makes it to find the hypotenuse of these triangles when you know one of the legs. All right, so let's just read what it says here. In a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, both legs are congruent, and the length of the hypotenuse is a length of the leg, whatever the leg is, multiplied by the square root of 2. Let's do some practice problems to work with this. Letter A, find the length of this triangle's hypotenuse. Well, wait a second. All I have to do is take this leg length, 31, multiply it times the square root of 2, and I find that the hypotenuse is 31 times the square root of 2 yards. Told you it was easy. <laughs> it's really easy, right? Um, and then I could evaluate that to the nearest yard if I wanted to with a calculator. Find the length of this triangle's missing side. Um, okay, this one's a little bit harder. So let's uh, let's actually get into this one. So, uh, by the way, these two sides are going to be the same. But this is going to be 63. Okay, wait, wait. Let me think about this. 63 is the um, length of hypotenuse, that has to be the square root of 2. And let me just uh, grab my square root symbol here. So the square root, oh, is it going to get it from that? Hey, it figured me out. All right, the square root of 2 times x. Okay, hold on. That means that to get x on a side by itself, I need to divide both sides by the square root of 2. 63 divided by the square root of 2 equals x. That means that x equals, all right, and let's just figure out by punching into a calculator, 63 over the square root of 2, 44.54, 44.54. Okay, now, that's an that's a approximation. Actually, 63 over the square root of 2 is a pretty good answer. If you remember, if you've taken enough algebra, you might remember we have to simplify that by multiplying. We can't have a square root in the denominator. So 63 times the square root of 2 over 2 
if we multiply both numerator and denominator by a square root of two. Um, I can't remember if the book gives the approximate or the exact answer. Oh, look, they gave the exact answer. So um, let's just take a look at how you simplify a square root like this. So if you have 63 over the square root of two, and we can't just leave a square root of two in the denominator, that's illegal. Um, what do we do with that square root symbol to get it out of the denominator? Well, what if I multiply this? What if I multiply this by, I'm gonna multiply by one because that's what I always do in algebra, but I'm gonna multiply by one in the form of the square root of two over the square root of two. What is that gonna give me if I multiply both numerator and denominator by the square root of two? Well, on top, I just get 63 times the square root of two. In the denominator, when I multiply the square root of two by itself, um, I end up with, let's see, if I multiply the square root of a number by itself, I'm saying, remember the square root means the number I have to multiply it by itself to get the number under the radical. And I'm doing that. I'm multiplying it by itself. I'm just going to get two on the bottom. And that's my answer. 63 times the square root of two over two meters. That can be approximated with 44.54, but unless it asks you to approximate, like in letter C or letter D, you shouldn't approximate. You should give the exact value. All right, so this was, I'm just going to label it letter B, and we'll move on to letter C. Find the perimeter of the triangle to the nearest inch. Okay, so this one's asking me to give an approximation, and we're looking at this triangle here. Um, so this is 18. I know the other leg has to be the same, 18, according to the properties of this type of triangle. And then the third side is going to be 18 times the square root of 2. So let's just do 18 times the square root of 2. Let's see if that works. There we go. And then uh, we're going to add that to 36. 18 plus 18 plus 18 times the square root of 2. Uh, my perimeter or, uh, is 61 point, and let's see, I can't remember if it was nearest tenth or nearest hundredth, 61.45, tenth of an inch, 61.5 inches. See, these are really easy problems because the relationships are easy. Letter D, find the length of the missing sides to the nearest mile. That's this triangle over here. Well, okay. This one, we're going to have to do the same thing we did up here. In fact, let me just copy this. Um, and we're going to say that X is the missing side length. Okay. So, but instead of 63 over the square root of 2, we're going to do 48. So all you do to change this hypotenuse into one of these side lengths, to change one of these side lengths to hypotenuse, we multiply times the square root of 2. To change the hypotenuse back, uh, we divide by the square root of 2. Okay, so we go one direction, we multiply, the opposite direction, we divide. Makes a lot of sense. So now we need to figure out what 48 divided by the square root of 2 is. 48 over square root of 2. And we get 33.94. Uh, it was to the nearest mile. Um, so that's just 34. Uh, let's just check our answers here against what's in the book just to make sure we're doing these right. So letter C, the answer was uh, 61.5. All right, I'm going to need to take a look at that for a second here. And then uh, find the length of the missing sides of the nearest mile. Oh, yeah, 61.5. That's what we got right here. And then uh, to the nearest mile, 34 miles. All right, lastly, a square building has a diagonal length of... 150 feet. What would be the square footage of one floor of the building? Okay, so here's here's what you need to know about a um, 45, 45, 90 right triangle. If I put two of them together, what shape do I get? Let's say I take this triangle, I flip it over and put the hypotenuses together. Do you see that I would have four right angles? Because I'd have this right angle, I'd have the opposite right angle. Then I'd add 45 plus 45, so you get 90, 45 plus 45, you get 90. Um, the 45, 45, 90 triangle is half of a square. And when you put them together, hypotenuse, hypotenuse, you actually get a square. So if a, and the hypotenuse is the diagonal of the square. 
So if I have a square building with a diagonal of 150 feet, that means that um, if I could figure out what one side length is, that side length would be um, the same on my other two sides, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm figuring out this side length and this side length, and then to figure out the square footage of a floor of the building, I just have to multiply those, and that'll give me the area of the square made up of those two triangles put together. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy, I'm just going to copy the work from letter B because this work is going to be very similar. Um, once again, I think we did, just did this before. And it's um, instead of, hold on one second. So letter E, instead of being either of the numbers we used before, now we're going to use 100 as my, oh, 150 as my diagonal length. 150. Okay. So I, it's like I have this triangle, except 150 is along this side. Um, and I need to figure out what this side is. So I'm just going to do 150 divided by the square root of two to get a side length. Uh, let's punch that into a calculator. 150. I get 106. Um, and we're just going to keep it to the nearest foot. Uh, so one side of my building is 106 feet. Now I need to figure out the square footage. So what I'm going to do with 106, I'm going to square it. Uh, so we'll take 106 squared. Oops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. So 106 to the second power gives me 1,100, oh, 11,250. 11,250 square feet. Hey, let's just pause for a second. Now, I rounded this to 106. If I would have truly done 106 squared, I'm just noticing something here. I would have gotten a number that was a little too small. Um, let's just take a look at a better way to do this problem. So I'm doing 150 over the square root of 2, okay? But then... I'm squaring it. So what is this actually going to be? This is actually going to be 150 squared, right, over the square root of 2 squared. What's the square root of 2 squared? Well, that's just 2. So it's going to be 150 squared over 2 when I simplify it correctly. Because I'm squaring 150 over the square root of 2. Squaring the square root of 2 gets rid of the square root symbol. I no longer need to approximate. I can figure this one out exactly. And I didn't even realize I could figure out exactly until I just I looked at it again. So let's just double check. 150 squared is 22,500. And then we're going to divide that by 2. We get 11,250. 11,250 square feet should be the answer. Let me just write in my label, and then let's check our answer and make sure we're right. 11,250 square feet. So now you should be able to work the problems associated with this lesson.